Demon Slayer Season 3 Finale. Come back here and get your sympathetic backstory. Oh, we're dispensing with the opening, just full movie mode. This season just flew by. I think it's because it was so action-packed. Something about his running is so... off-putting. Creepy. Speaking of sympathetic backstories, he never got one. Not worthy. Maybe if his art was a little bit better. Yeah, the humans are the frail ones. And anyway, Tanjiro asks why are they all self-serving. The answer for the demons in most cases is that they were forced into a situation where they experienced cruelty, decided that that's the extent of the world, and accepted their role in it. But then again, so did the Hashira, with wildly different outcomes. And I think Tanjiro's answer to the cruelty of the world, and the show's answer, by extension, is service to others. And there's a parallel in there I really love for the demons and the humans, where that decision at first glance, I'm going to use any means at my disposal, and principles don't matter, only my survival, what I want, my success matters, seems easier, and gives you so many more tools at your disposal. And there's a parallel there I really love to real life with the demons and the humans and their different strengths and fragilities, where the demons take the approach of, it doesn't matter what your principles are, all that matters is getting what you want, protecting yourself, enacting your will, and at first glance, in some sense, that does make you stronger because you just have so many more tools at your disposal. You can do anything you want. You don't have parameters to live by. The Hashira and Tanjiro are physically at a disadvantage, which mirrors the fact that they're bound in by guidelines and principles. But long term, what Tanjiro is building is stronger and actually is the antidote to the very problems that caused the demons in the first place. Oh yeah, and then... Genya just lifts a tree for some reason. He's been watching Vinland Saga season 2. Just what I expect. From Tanjiro. Swordsmith Village Arc comes to a conclusion. Oh, but we still get the hey hey. A connected bond, daybreak and first light. Connected bond is what I've been hoping for going forward. Keep talking about that. Our growing strength as a group. He makes the most pathetic noises too. Close to the ground. He really is rat-like. Yeah, she's holding it down. Hope we get more of her in this episode. Yeah, I mean, that's her one point of fragility, right? Is is the daybreak. The light. Oh, I forgot his foot got blasted. I mean, Tundra's the king of, like, taking mortal injuries and returning to full strength, so... You can always count on a good flashback to give you energy. I, I miss you. I even miss your crying. Hope to see you next season. Tanjiro has a lot of strengths. Perhaps his greatest power is being able to summon the right memory at the right time. Wish I could do that. <laughs> just rearranging. I just rearranging my muscles and bones. Oh! Did he, he just learns that he needs to move through memory. This guy. It's cutting, it's getting there. I don't think this is it though. Oh he, oh, he got huge. I mean, I can feel sorry for you and try to stop you. It's not mutually exclusive. Sometimes there's a special kind of strength that's reserved for the truly weak. Damn, they just took that to the face, literally. Put yourself out. Nezuko's got him. She got him. She can take fall damage, it's all good. They're fine. I was sure Nezuko was gonna soften his blow, but she just like fell by herself. I, I wonder about that line. At first glance, it's just something that sounds cool, like it's about his commitment. There's a part of me that wonders. It's very hard to believe just because of how good Tanjiro is, but what makes me think it is two things. One, how exciting it would be, and two, every hero's heroism gets more heroic when it's challenged 
to the maximum extent possible. And there's a special kind of temptation or a special kind of corruption possible when it runs counter to something that they hold sacred. An example from another show would be the recent My Hero Academia season six, where Deku's heroism is tested when hero society turns its back on him. For Tanjiro, I wonder if there isn't some chance that he actually will descend into hell, even if just temporarily, and if that wouldn't be because of something with Nezuko, which is what started the journey. You know, it's this reason for venturing out is to find a cure for her. What happens if Nezuko's demonhood takes over, or he's in a position to bargain with the demons for or her survival and reversion. Could be nothing. Could just be a line, or it could be foreshadowing. Or, I mean, the temptation could come from a chance to kill Muzan, you know? Like compromising yourself to fulfill your objective. I am not gonna cry at your sympathetic backstory, no matter how sympathetic it is. One of them has a gun. One of them is lodged in a tree. This is Swordsmith Village. Maybe somebody will show up with a better one. You have a gun too! What a waste. What did Nezuko do by jumping after him? Did she like throw him into the tree? There's the blade! You got it. It's finished. Hey! He's alive! He's gonna break it. Yes, I love how this this victory is just so interconnected. Connected bonds, and dies again. This time I'm not worried. You should really get him to a hospital. Yes, yes. We're still all there. I see you, Rengoku. Rengoku's still alive. Do the Zenitsu thing again, that was great. Yeah, he did it, hell yeah. But this time with fire. Imagine seeing Tanjiro like <laughs> coming up, coming up at you like that. Just the sheer fear. You know it's over. Boom. And even remember to say the name of the attack. Good. Come for the amazing action. The satisfaction of killing an upper rank demon. Stay for the sympathetic backstory. <laughs> Nezuko. This is, I mean, I don't know. You see where his priorities are. Nezuko's kind of like the linchpin of his whole thing. And there's nothing to be gained by her running out into the field. Get the hell out of there. What is she trying to get at? She's trying to warn him of something. It wasn't... It wasn't for Tanjiro. Alright, Nezuko, get back to the trees. Get the hell out! Wrong way! Wrong way! Wrong way! He's gonna protect her above all else. This has cost humans the li their lives, I wonder. This is a very interesting test. The not Tokido. <laughs> I don't know who, but not Tokido. Man has been through enough. It's time to just make a choice. Make the best choice you can and stick with it. Whoa, this triumph turned to sadness real, real fast. Almost broke him. Yeah, yeah, this is un this is not normal Tanjiro. He's like, he's so good at making these snap decisions. He always finds a will. Nezuko is something totally different. It's just, it's deeper. It's too deep. Overrides cognition. Nezuko made the choice for him. By launching him <laughs> into the air. There's no way. There's no way. I, I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Nah, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> no way. There's no way. But what it is, is a really amazing gesture from Nezuko. Intentional self-sacrifice. Wow, I'm honestly shocked. Oh, this demon's gonna get it so bad. Yeah, I... This time I believe it. 
Oh, such a beautiful shot with the sun. There he is. There it is. Here we go. Now he's dead. <laughs> yeah, he's been doing this. He's been, like, weaponizing his patheticness. Yeah, that day has come. Surely this time. He's gone. It's over. They didn't even really try to make his story sad, which is kind of a weirdo. But I think his purpose is solidifying or explicitly stating something that ties into the overall narrative. Strength versus weakness and the ties to selfishness versus service. Tanjiro and Nezuko making an attempt at the ultimate sacrifice there as a counterpoint. Tanjiro actually exceeded my expectations a little bit by respecting her wishes and her intent at sacrifice. I feel like this scene will be very important later. In a sense, it was a test of exactly what I was just talking about before that happened. What happens to Tanjiro and what does he do when Nezuko is jeopardized in a real way? That time Nezuko made the decision for him, but he was able to use that momentum to try to save the humans. Does that mean he's grown or does that mean an increased fear of losing her when she inevitably survives the scene?